is the round table and we are here to discuss the 91st Annual Academy Awards. Okay, with that, I think we can dive into the biggest like award of the night, which will be the Best Picture Award. The nominees are Black Panther, Black Klansman, Bohemian Rhapsody, The Favorite, Green Book, Roma, A Star is Born, and Vice. Any initial thoughts or opinions on these initial nominees? All very good movies, but I've not seen all of them. Yeah, I haven't I have seen The Favorite or no. Green Book. Um, I, Black Panther snuck up on me a little bit with this specific category. It, it's deserving of an Oscar, I just don't know if it's best picture. Let's see what the interviewees know about this year's nominees. Can you name all eight best picture nominees for the 2019 ceremony? No. I can't think of any from this year. Black Panther, Black Klansmen. <laughs> there's some more, but I forget them. I know there's Black Panther and the Black Klansmen. I think Bohemian Rhapsody's on there as well. That's all I know. Um, okay. Uh, Black Panther, Green Book. Um, I don't even, I, like, I don't know anything else. Um, oh, I was watching it the other day. Um, A Star is Born. What else? That's all I got. Best picture. So, the favorite, Black Panther, Bohemian Rhapsody, uh, Green Mile. No? That was 1999. No, not Green Mile, Green, Green Book! book. <laughs> <laughs> My head is in a different place right now. Um, Roma, A Star is Born, Green Book, Black Panther, Black Klansman, The Favorite, um, Vice, and, oh my god. <laughs> I, I really can't name the other one. So there was Black Klansman, Black Panther, Bohemian Rhapsody, Green Book, The Favorite, Roma, A Star is Born, and Vice. Let's see what the roundtable has to say about the Best Picture category and one of its new and special nominees. Movies like Black Panther haven't previously been nominated for an Oscar, let alone, dare I say, like the biggest award of the evening. So, oh, yeah. um, I think what makes something Best Picture, obviously there's a lot that goes into that. <laughs> and. I just don't think Black Panther, I can't even like really put it into words, it's kind of more of like a feeling. Mm -hmm. And the movie speaks to different people in different ways, mm -hmm. and I think maybe that's why I don't feel that it deserves Best Picture, but I'm sure there are many other folks that would. Yeah, I have to agree on that. I think Best Picture comes down more to like the craft of filmmaking, and that's like the directing, the cinematography, the acting, the writing, and what like the story has to say. Oh, Black Panther was an enjoyable film, I really liked it. It doesn't hit like the caliber of like a best picture worthy film. Yeah, I yeah. think like super movie, um, superhero movies in general really don't always necessarily mm -hmm. belong in the best picture because mm -hmm. I feel like best pictures like kind of stand for something almost. Yeah. Whereas like you know with superhero movies, it's just following like a comic book and just like a superhero. Yeah, yeah, yeah. just like it's like yeah. a very typical normal plot that's like to be kind of that's, predicted yeah. and expected at the time. Now let's see what the interviewees have to say. I mean, I think a movie is worthy of best picture if it like if it like looks really nice and also if like the message is particularly strong compared to other movies. Um, what makes a movie worthy of best picture would be um, it has like an actual meaning. It's not just a movie for like <laughs> commercial <laughs> use. Um, like a purpose, like it has something behind it. I think it's a, it's a multitude of elements. It first starts with like the screenplay. You need to have something that's both like has witty dialogue and has something to say. Like it can't just be like your average like puff piece. And then it stems from like a unique, a director with a unique vision that's able to like bring that screenplay to life. And then it's like all the rest filling in, like a great performance, a great cinematography or costume design or production design, like it's all those elements coming together to make like a perfect film. Next, we asked what were some of their favorite movies of 2019. Um, either Venom or Black Panther. I thought they were both very well written movies. 
My favorite movie of this year was probably Eighth Grade, which was directed by Bill Burnham. Um, I didn't really get out to see a lot of movies, but I remember the two I do remember going to see was Black Panther and Infinity War. And here are the roundtable's predictions. I think in the end, A Star is Born is actually going to win, and here's why. It was just so popular, and it got so much recognition, and it was still really well done. They managed to do a good job with it. Like, for Bradley Cooper's first time directing, he did a really good job. Everybody loves Lady Gaga. Like, it had good songs. You know, it was well produced. So I think that's why. It's hard. If I had to pick, I would choose, I'm going to choose between, like, you know, Roma. Um, I'm not going to say his name. Or Spike Lee for Black Klansman, because they were both really well done. Um, if I had to pick between those two, I would say Spike Lee for Black Klansman. So that's what I would say. I'm going to say Christian Bale, just because I haven't watched the movie personally, but I've heard so many good things about it, and like the how he looks to like the makeup and like prosthetics, I guess you would say, is really good, and I heard his acting was supposed to be like superb. Uh, I'll say Glenn Close for the wife because she already won a Golden Globe for it and she's just a phenomenal actress in general. So I'm gonna say her. For Black Klansman, is it Adam Driver? Yes. Okay, I'll say him then because I watched that movie personally. I loved it. Like, I don't really like Adam Driver that much, but I liked him in that. Um, I'll say probably Rachel Weiss or um, Emma Stone for the favorite. I really like that movie and they did good jobs. Roma. I haven't seen it, but, um, like, I haven't seen it all. I've seen, like, parts of it. I haven't watched it all the way through yet, but it was so different from any of the films that I've seen this year. I liked If Beale Street Could Talk a lot, but I think it would be Black Klansman, I would have to say, just because of how, like, well done it was, like, a period, I guess, like a period piece, and, like, the acting and everything in the soundtrack. Best picture! <laughs> um, I honestly think it's gonna be A Star is Born, and I don't disagree. I really liked that movie. It was a very popular movie, as opposed to stuff like Roma. For best director, um, I would hope it would be Yorgos Lanthimos or uh, Spike Lee, especially Spike Lee, I love him. But uh, it's probably gonna be Alfonso Cuaron. If not, I think Spike Lee, but you know. I think it's between Christian Bale and Rami Malek, and I feel like it really depends on whether the Academy goes with like the crowd favorite or like the established. Like, I don't think Christian Bale's not a crowd favorite, but like, I feel like Rami Malek's like super popular now because of this movie, so. Uh, probably, mm, I'd say Glenn Close. Cause she's Glenn Close, that's why. <laughs> I hope Sam Elliott gets it for A Star Is Born, but I feel like Adam Driver is definitely up there as well. I Probably Adam Driver. Emma Stone. Just because, I that's who I, I that's just her. who I, I don't even have a reason, I just definitely yeah, think she's just take it. Um, I don't feel like A Star Is Born will get it. I think, probably Black Klansman. Uh, so best picture, uh, my personal pick would be A Star Is Born because it's my favorite movie of the year, but I think the Academy's gonna go with Roma because it's the more important movie of the year. I wouldn't be surprised, and I also wouldn't be against it. Um, best director is gonna go to Alfonso Cuaron for Roma. I think Bradley Cooper should at least be nominated, but since he isn't and the Academy gave Roma 10 nominations and it really was a passion project of his, they're gonna honor him with the best director nomination. Oh, wait. Going to best actor, it's really a three-man race between Rami Malek, Christian Bale, and, uh, Rami Malek, Christian Bale, and Bradley Cooper. I think Bradley Cooper's lost some steam, but because, like, Rami Malek has become a fan favorite and they're looking for more viewership, they're gonna give it to him. Plus he gave a fantastic Freddie Mercury like performance, he really became the person. Christian Bale did the same though, so if either of them won it, I wouldn't be surprised, but my money's on Rami Malek. Moving to Best Actress, I think um, they're gonna give it to Glenn Close because she's been nominated seven times now, hasn't been nominated, and the Academy likes to give awards like that. Like, we've nom nominated you enough, you just haven't won out yet, so here's your like, 
guys. Like, they did it with Al Pacino for Son of a Woman. Like, was it his best performance? No. But also, it's Al Pacino. That's the shit. It's Glenn Close, even though I'd love to see Lady Gaga win it. Um, also, wouldn't be surprised if they threw Yelitsia Apolicio in there just because they love Goma so much. Um, even the Best Supporting Actor, this is Mahershala Ali it's from Green Book. He's won every award come up to this. I haven't seen the movie yet, so if I want a personal preference, I'd probably say Sam Elliott for A Star Is Born, um, Best Supporting Actress. Um, every award's gone to Regina King. I haven't seen if Beale Street could talk yet, so again, I really can't say much. I wouldn't be surprised if she won it, but my personal pick would probably be Rachel Weisz in The Favourite. She did a great job. Move on to Best Adapted Screenplay, I'm going to say Black Klansman again. Spike Lee has never won an Oscar yet, and like I already said, the Oscars love to like give awards to people like because they're that person. I think Black Klansman's going to be that movie that finally gets Spike Lee that Oscar. Plus it would be well deserved, it's a phenomenal screenplay. Best Original Screenplay. I think this is one of the tightest races between The Favourite and Green Book, but I would probably say The Favourite because Yorgos Lanthimos has been working for um, about a decade now and they like to honor new talent in like the original screenplay nomin- They like to honor new like original voices in the original screenplay category, that's why I think they're gonna give Yorgos Lanthimos the award for The Favourite. And to end the segment, here's the round table talking about a group favorite from 2019. Now, continuing to talk about Mary Poppins Returns, and we just started talking about the legend himself, Dick Van Dyke. I love that they brought the him back. Okay. I did not even realize it was him at first until I actually looked, and it made me so happy, because he was such a fun character in the first mm -hmm. movie, and such a good actor even today. Like, yes, his, like, I know the biggest, like, flaw people say of the original is his accent. What, ladies and gents? Comical poem, suitable for the occasion, extemporized and thought up before your very eyes. All right, here we go. Yeah, I mean, he could have done a more accurate accent, but like, it's I wouldn't have wanted Bert any other way. Like, then yeah. it would just be generic British person number two. Like, yeah, for like the older kids, like for the older kids like us and the parents, like that would like such a cool oh, part. And even for the people who like younger kids, he was a fun character. But that's so. what I liked about mm -hmm. the new one because like the themes it are catered to that everyone. resonate to anybody. Like that's what movies used to be. I feel like yeah. we're in a place now in cinema where like kids movies are directed at kids and then we'll try their hardest to make like an adult joke. Like the Angry Birds movie or the Boss movie. That's not a movie. Exactly. They <laughs> That's stopped, a sin. They I stopped being I didn't movies. even get the Speaking of sin. I, I unfortunately day, watched them both. God awful. Just mm -hmm. god awful movie. First of all, why would I want to watch a movie called Boss Baby? It was awful. And he got an Oscar nomination. Why? Wow. Wow. Are you kidding? Yeah, I wish I was making that. Oh my god! The bar is too low. What world do we live in? Well, Suicide Squad won an Oscar, but that's beside the That should not happen. No. no. But like, started. back to Mary Poppins like Returns. It. What I also <laughs> liked on what they did was with Lin Manuel Miranda's character because. It, Lemon well Land was able to put his own spin on it, where like you can tell he was like calling back to Bud from the original, yeah. but he was like, his own when unique character. he was rapping character. too. Oh god, the, mm -hmm. the, the so cover is not the book. That whole, mm -hmm. that whole scene was one of the highlights of the movies. It. Because it like really mixed the elements of like classic film, modern film, and like everything. <laughs> Hot take, remember me deserved the Oscar for best original song? Boss baby. Best I hate runs. I mean, I like how. <laughs> hot take, you hate nuns. Yeah, hot take, none. PSA, Emma hates nuns. Just great. Dick Van Dyke. <laughs> Dick Van Dyke. 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 Supporting actress is <laughs> No footage will go unused, kind of. Yeah, but like, I think. Do you want me to go into the subcategories? No. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed the first episode of the second semester. Make sure you watch the Oscars Sunday night on ABC. Bye. Ciao.